Good morning. We are on the record. This is the digital video deposition of Kelly Beltran, taken in the matter of B.R. et al. versus County of Orange. Uh, Superior Court Case 815 CV 0626 CJC PJW. <clears throat> Today we're at Signature Flight Support 19301 Campus Drive. Suite 100 in Santa Ana. Today's date is Friday, March 24th, 2017, and the time is 10.54 a.m. My name is Christian Tier, a legal video specialist with Jordan Media, Inc., 1228 Madison Avenue in San Diego. Certified shorthand reporter is Maggie Smith with Crom Court Reporting <coughs> in San Diego. If counsel would please state their appearances, the reporter Sean. will swear in the witness. Sean McMillan, appearing on behalf of plaintiff. Zachary Schwartz appeared on behalf of the defendants, County of Orange and Maisha Hammond. Kevin McCormick on behalf of the deponent, Kelly Beltran. Can you would please raise your right hand to be administered to you. If you solemnly state under penalty of perjury, the testimony you give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Good morning, Ms. Beltran. Thanks for coming out this morning. Good morning. Before we get rolling, can I get you to, just for the record, my own edification, state and spell your full name? My name is Kelly Beltran, and it's spelled K-E-L-L-I-B-E-L-T-R-A-N. Do you have a middle name? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, Jean, J-E-A-N. God, I guessed wrong on every, every single one of those except Beltran. And Ms. Beltran, where do you currently work? I currently work for the Superior Court um, of California, County of Orange. One second, I'm having a technical difficulty. It's one thing you learn in pilot training, always have another solution. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry about that. You are telling me where you currently work. Superior Court of California, County of Orange. Do you work in any specific division or unit? Yes, the juvenile, juvenile court unit. Where is that? In Orange. Specifically? It's the Lamoureux Justice Center in Orange off um, 341, uh, the city center south in Orange, California. Is that the one that's like right off the city drive? Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't know where that is. How long do you work there? Uh, two years for the juvenile court. I've been with the courts for 24 years. Okay. Just a different division? Yes. Where did you work before the juvenile court? Uh, the criminal department, still for the Superior Court, County of Orange. Different location? Different locations, yeah. So you, many different yes. places, okay. Would, when would you estimate that you started at the um, juvenile court? March 2000, well actually it was January 2015. I took over as the juvenile court unit manager March of 2015. What position did you hold in January 2015? I was still a court operations manager. <clears throat> but for the juvenile court or just generally? It was, it was a transition time, so I was assigned to juvenile court in January, but I officially took over the unit in March. So I worked with a, a deputy manager who was trying to bring me on board okay. before I took over the unit. So sort of to get up to speed on yes. what they do. Yes. One thing you got to remember as we're going through the process today is that even though it's a somewhat informal process and it's somewhat, you know, more colloquial than it might be in court, we still have to try to avoid talking over each other because she's trying to write everything down and it's hard for her to do it. So I, I'm guilty too. I do the same thing all the time. It gets very conversational, um, but we want to try to avoid that because it makes a kind of a messy record. So you have to wait till I'm done, and I'll try to wait till you're done. To. So just uh, to sort of clarify, in January, from January to March, you were just sort of um, like shadowing somebody or something to get up to speed on what the job entailed? Yes. Okay. And then in March is when you officially took over? Yes. And when you officially took over, what was your official job title? It was the same, court operations mm -hmm. manager over the juvenile court unit. What does a court operations manager do? So I oversee the 
the operations of, of the unit as far as procedures. Uh, I'm in charge of the budget, um, the staffing, the staffing both in the courtrooms and in our um, what we call our case processing unit, which is the, the back end support. Um, obviously, I don't oversee the judges, but I would oversee programs, anything our juvenile presiding judge needed implemented. I would help initiate that. Okay. Now, when you're talking about um, back end support, can you give me a little bit clearer understanding of what that it's, means? It's, yes, it's the clerical, it's the customer service, it's the people in the clerk's office, the count, they staff the counter windows, they do data entry. Um, when we had case files, which we did at the time, it was the you know processing of the, the case files, filing them. and. Mm -hmm. The actual paper. Yes, kind of the paperwork. Okay. And then in budget, what do you what do you do with respect to budgeting? So the budget that I'm over has to do with the staffing. I'm given a certain amount for um, staffing levels within the juvenile court. Again, the support staff needed for the courtrooms and our case processing unit, um, as well as some services and supplies, postage for mailing notices, uh, things of that nature. Okay. So the budget and staffing, those are sort of intertwined? Yes. Okay. And then the programs, oversight of the programs, can you give me a little bit better description of what that entails? Sure. If the <laughs> juvenile presiding judge decides they, she wants to open a specific, say, a collaborative court or a courtroom program, she would reach out to me for assistance as far as, you know, how do we staff it? Um, what days of the week might work better? What courtrooms do we have? Um, obviously, she would make the decisions. I would just work to implement what she's decided to do. So, sort of like logistics? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, you have been designated by the juvenile court to come here to testify today as the person most knowledgeable with respect to several designated areas of inquiry. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you a document that we will mark as exhibit number A to your deposition. <clears throat> and I don't know if you guys have, I presume you have copies of the notice. All right. Well, I have an extra one if anybody needs it. So. <clears throat> have different signatures. There are different subpoenas. I gave you the production subpoena. Let me give you the... Oh, well, lucky for me, um, you all have copies of the correct subpoena because I don't have extra copies other than hers and mine. Oh, here it is. They just got mixed up. We'll get to the production subpoena, subpoena a little bit later, but that's uh, that should be the right one. As the reporter's version, the correct one? Yes. Okay, if I can get you to take a look there at Exhibit A, and I'll ask you some questions about it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Do you recognize Exhibit A? Yes. How so? This was the subpoena that was served on the court um, to produce documents related to removal warrants. Well, let's do this just to clear things up. Okay. I'll go ahead and mark another document as Exhibit B. B is in Bravo. B is in Bravo. And here's an extra one. <clears throat> OK, 
A exhibit B is titled subpoena to produce documents, information, or objects, or to permit inspection of premises in a civil action. That's on page one towards the yes. top. Do you see that? Yes. Is that what you re were referring to when you had mentioned that it was the subpoena to produce yes. documents? Yes. This one actually had a production of documents as well, exhibit A, and I just, they both came together, so right. I apologize. <clears throat> okay, not a problem, not a big deal. We're going to get to exhibit B a little bit okay. later. I just wanted to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So going back to Exhibit A, if I can get you to turn to, looks like it's the fourth page in, but it's actually numbered page one of six in the bottom right-hand corner. It's titled Attachment A. Do you see that? Yes. And I'll just start with category number one the number of removal warrants sought and or obtained by the County of Orange from January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2015 in connection with suspected child abuse or neglect. First of all, did I read that correctly? Yes. What steps, if any, did you take to become knowledgeable so that you could testify on behalf of the juvenile court here today as to category number one? And to the extent it seeks information protected by the attorney-client privilege, I object. Right. I don't, I don't want to know, you know, if all you did was meet with your attorney and that's it, I don't want to know about that. What I want to know about is what you yourself did to satisfy yourself that you had the knowledge base necessary to come in and testify as the voice of the juvenile court here today. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. So what did you do? So I looked to see if we had any documentation about the number of removal warrants that we might have um, issued or were sought through the County of Orange, and there are no documents exist with that information. Do you guys, and when I say you guys, I mean the juvenile court, do you track in any way the number of removal applications for removal warrants that come into your court? We do not track the number that we get. We, I mean, we do take them in, but we don't track or keep stats on the numbers that come in. What do you keep track of in terms of the removal warrants or the applications for removal warrants that are processed through your court? We don't track that information. Okay. And that is true, I presume, you can correct me if I'm wrong, when we look at category number two, it's more or less the same question as category number one but for the um, year January 1st, 2014 through December 31st, 2014. You see that? Yes. Is it the same with respect to that, that yes. you don't keep track of the data? Yes. Okay. okay. Please allow Mr. McMillan to finish his question. Yeah. And then going and looking at categories three through like 3 through 11, they're all pretty much the same question. And just for clarity, I'll just read number 11. It says the number of removal warrants sought and or obtained by the County of Orange from January 1st, 2005 through December 31st, 2005 in connection with suspect suspected child abuse or neglect. First of all, did I read that correctly? Yes. And with respect to request numbers 3 through 11, is it the same answer that there is no such data available? Yes. Is there a reason that the court does not keep track of the that particular statistic? To the extent it calls for attorney-client privilege or official information privilege, I object. He's asking about your knowledge. Yeah, as the voice of the juvenile court, mm -hmm. is there a reason? I wouldn't know. Are there any other steps that you undertook to ascertain whether or not the information we're seeking in request number one through 11 would be available from some source other than a spreadsheet or something like that? Can you repeat the question? Okay, you understand that request number one through 11, they're, they're basically seeking a gross number per year. Yes. Is there any way that you know of that you could have determined the gross number per year? of warrant applications? 
It's possible. How? I don't know. It, well, it's possible. I don't know how far back we could have gone. If I could have worked with our technology department to try to see if I can extract it, the information from our databases. However, I don't believe I'd be able to be specific about if, if the warrants were issued for suspected child abuse or neglect. What, what would you be able to track? It would be a number, uh, it, possibly it could be the number of warrants the social, services, social service agency in Orange County um, filed with the court, but that also includes other reasons besides suspected child abuse or neglect. Right. It include like protective custody warrants under Welfare and Institutions Code Section 340, those sorts yes, of things? Yes, yes. Do you know whether or not there's any um, delineation in the database between removal warrants, that's where you're going to remove a child from the custody of its parents, versus the protective custody warrant? There is not. Okay. So if you were to go back and have the data people extract the data, all you would be able to get would be the gross number of warrants. Correct. Okay. And you talked about this database. Mm -hmm. What's the database? Okay, I think that's the term you used. I'd object in that respect. Can I have her uh, answer to the second two questions back where she talked about the database, have that reread because it's actually her word. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that case, I just want to pose an objection, Vagan, if you assess to what you mean by database. Okay. It would be the sentence with the word extract in it. is answer, I don't know. Well, it's possible. I don't know how far back we could have gone. If I could have worked with our technology department to try to see if I could extract it, the information from our databases. However, I don't believe I'd be able to be specific about it if the warrants were issued for suspected child abuse or neglect. What did you mean by your use of the word databases? It's our case management systems. Okay. Um, which we changed in, 2000, in December of 2015. Okay. What is the current, uh, what do you call it currently? Currently it's Odyssey. What was it prior? Banner. Did you check in preparing yourself to testify here today as the person most knowledgeable for the juvenile court with respect to these designated areas of inquiry, did you check with anybody in IT to ascertain whether or not you could, in fact, um, obtain the data that we were looking for? I did not. Okay. Is there a reason you did not? I was just advised <coughs> okay. not to. Okay. When you say advised, if it has to do with an attorney conversation or an official information privilege, he's not entitled to that. Okay. Yeah, let me ask it this way. You said you were advised. Um, was it by somebody other than an attorney? No. Okay. So, yeah, he's, he's right in that. If, if an attorney told you, hey, you don't have to go any okay, further, then you don't have okay. to answer the question. Yeah, you don't answer any questions about attorney conversations. Okay. Right. Do you know, or let me ask you this first, did you talk to anybody in IT at all about any subject relative to these designated areas of inquiry today? No. Did you talk to anybody at work other than your attorneys to ascertain whether or not they had some ideas about how you might um, develop an understanding so that you would be able to testify here today as the voice of the juvenile court with respect to category numbers 1 through 11? No. Okay, so this is all based on your own work and your own personal knowledge? Yes. Okay, you didn't do anything, any additional research outside of your ordinary job duties to ascertain whether or not this data that we're looking for here today is either available or that you could have extracted it. You didn't make those efforts? Correct. Okay. Other than your attorneys, is there, other than your attorneys instructing you not to, 
um, is there any reason you did not undertake an effort to see if there were other sources for that data? Objection argumentative calls for attorney-client information. Your, your question presupposes something that you're not allowed to inquire into. Okay, let me do it this way. Earlier you told me somebody advised you. Other than that person advising you not to go look for further data, did anybody else tell you not to? And again, object to the question. It's entering the attorney-client privilege. You can go ahead and answer. You're instructed not to answer that question. Okay. Attorney-client privilege. Are you going to follow your attorney's instruction? Yes. Do you know when it was that the County of Orange first began making applications to obtain removal warrants? My understanding, it was 2009. I don't know which month. Okay. How did you develop that understanding? I asked. Who did you Someone. ask? Someone. We have a, a support staff person who remembers it being 2009 and then looking through the policies, I just, you know, confirmed it's about that date. And this, or about that year, excuse me. And this support staff person that you spoke with, does that support staff person have a name? Yes, Barbara Jew. How do you spell that? B-A-R-B-A-R-A, uh, -A -A, and then Jew is J-U. Did she used to be like the custodian of records or something over there? Her um, name seems really familiar. Not that I'm aware. Okay. What position does she hold, if you know? I believe her title is office specialist. <clears throat> Did you speak to anybody else about that subject other than Barbara Jew? No. Okay. Why was it that you spoke to or felt comfortable that Barbara Jew could give you the information you needed? Barbara works with the judges as far as receiving the, the warrants and she's kind of like the passes the paper along so she would have remembered when she started doing that. Okay. So she would have remembered seven years ago? Yes. Or almost eight years ago? Yes. Do you know whether or not she referenced any documents to come up with that date? No. Okay. And this conversation that you had with Miss Ju, was it face to face? Yes. Okay. At her office? She doesn't have an office. So at your office? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. About how long was the conversation? A couple minutes. Okay. And was she able to give you a response to your queries right there on the spot, or did she yes. have to look? I'm sorry. Or did she have to look up the information? Yes, she responded right on the spot. Okay. How did she know that she would need to come to your office to talk about this? We're in close proximity, mm -hmm. so it was just a passing by conversation. Okay, so she didn't have notice. You didn't like send her an email and say, hey, come in here. I need some information from you. Correct. Okay. So she didn't have an opportunity to actually go look at documents or review anything to come up with a date range for you. That's just something she remembered out of her head. Correct. And you never followed up with her to find out if there were any documents or anything to support this 2009 date, did you? No. Okay. Is there a reason why you didn't? I didn't feel I needed them. I had the policies and the procedures and the dates seemed to correspond with that. So. Okay. Now, you say you had the policies and the procedures. Let me ask you first. You noticed at the outset that there was, in fact, a um, request to produce documents that was served on you along with the subpoena, right? Yes. And that is listed at attachment B to exhibit A, am I correct? Yes. Did you review any documents in preparation for your deposition here today? I quickly reviewed the ones that I had turned in, yes. Okay, any other documents? No. Okay. So, so when you say, I quickly reviewed the ones that I turned in, would those have been the documents that you provided in response to the subpoena depicted at Exhibit B? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to switch over to Exhibit B in just a moment, not quite yet. Other than Barbara Jew and obviously your attorneys, 
did you speak with anybody else um, to assist yourself or to, to get assistance in preparing to testify here today as the voice of the juvenile court of Orange County regarding the designated areas of inquiry on Exhibit A? Yes. Okay, who else did you speak with? I spoke to Blanca Escobedo. It's B-L-A-N-C-A. -A. Escobedo is E-S-C-O-B-E-D-O. -E um, she's a principal analyst with the Orange County Superior Court. She was in a management position prior to my arrival. She's the one I took over the job for. Mm -hmm. And I just confirmed, I showed her what I had and asked if she knew of anything else anywhere. And she could not come up with any additional documents or information as, as well, so. Okay. Did, you, did you ask her about when she thought these warrants started being applied for? No. Okay. So the only person you asked about that would have been Barbara Jew? Yes. Okay. And I think you told me that uh, Ms. Escobedo was not able to identify any further documents? Correct. <clears throat> okay. And looking at Exhibit B, Attachment A, pages one through three of attachment A, you see there's a big long list of types of documents that we were looking for there, right? Yes. And on some of those categories, you were not able to locate responsive documents. Am I correct about that? Yes. I'm going to show you what we will mark as exhibit C to your deposition. Do you recognize Exhibit C? Yes. What is Exhibit C? That is the affidavit of custodian of records that I completed in response to the subpoena. Okay, and that's your signature in the bottom right-hand corner? Yes. And then I see your typewritten name over to the left, Kelly Beltran, Operations Manager? Yes. Is it correct that you did this on March 9th, 2017? Yes. Okay, with respect to category number one, that would have been any and all written procedures in place prior to December 31st, 2016 and any and all iterations thereof for seeking or obtaining a removal warrant. And then removal warrant is, defi is defined as a warrant or similar court order issued by a judge of the Superior Court of California, County of Orange, authorizing the Orange County Child Protective Services to take custody of a child from his or her parents based on suspected child abuse or neglect. Am I correct about that? Yes. Okay. What efforts, if any, did you undertake to locate documents responsive to that request, number one? So I searched through, uh, we have file cabinets of historical documentation, if you will. I searched through the file cabinets looking for anything that might be similar to a removal order or a removal warrant. I looked for dependency warrants and protective custody warrants, anything that I thought might have that name that tied to what you define as a removal warrant. Mm -hmm. We also have a, it's a SharePoint site, which is a shared document library that you can do word searches in. So I searched for a variety of keywords, trying to find procedures or any documents that provided instruction on how to seek or obtain a removal warrant. And you were unable to locate anything? Yes. Okay, either in the paper files or in this uh, SharePoint? Yes. Now describe for me, if you would, what is SharePoint? Is that a database of documents? It, yes, it's an, it's an, I believe it's a web-based application and it's meant to house um, documents that you can share across you know, people that you designate. And so it's somewhat of our repository for forms, procedures, policies, um, and information. Okay. And you couldn't locate anything responsive to request number one in SharePoint either, correct? That is correct. 
that you do anything else other than look through the paper files and the file cabinets and this SharePoint site, that you do anything else to locate responsive documents? No. Okay, did you talk to anybody? No. Okay. Going on to number two, category number two is any and all documents relating to, concerning, or depicting the number of removal warrants sought or obtained by the County of Orange from January 1st, 2005 through December 31st, 2015 in connection with suspected child abuse or neglect. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. And when you read it, did you understand it? Yes. What, if anything, did you do to locate documents responsive to that request? I looked through our, um, our routine filing statistics that we received to see if we included the number of removal type warrants, and we did not. When you say routine filing statistics, what do you mean? So we, we receive monthly stats on number of cases filed. You know, dependency or delinquency. Um, I'm trying to think what else is on that, where there's like just a report that's a general report of juvenile court. Again, it's filings. Um, it might show the number of, I don't know, um, cases that were dismissed, um, cases disposed, uh, incoming, outcoming type workload assessments. Do you have the ability to request customized reports? Yes. Okay, and who would you request customized support uh, reports from? Our court technology department. Did you make any inquiry of your court technology department to ascertain whether or not you could get them uh, to generate a custom report that reflected the total number of warrants obtained or issued on an annualized basis? No, I did not. Is there a reason you did not? To the extent it calls for information protected by either the official privilege or attorney client privilege, I object. Go ahead. Are you instructing her not to answer on some basis? Those two bases, I wanted to understand that if conversations okay. were involved, which are covered by the attorney client and official information privileges, she's not to answer the question as to those conversations. Okay. Go ahead and answer the question. Can you repeat it? I can have it reread. Is there a reason you did not? What was the you need question to go, prior you need to, to go that? Back yes, further. please. Yeah. Let's go back a couple questions so she can get the context. <coughs> Question, okay, and who would you request customized support reports from? Answer, our technology department. Question, did you make any inquiry of your court technology department to ascertain whether or not you could get them to generate a custom report that reflected the total number of warrants obtained or issued on an annualized basis? Answer, no, I did not. Question, is there a reason why you did not? No reason. Okay. Just didn't think it was uh, important to do that? Well, like I stated earlier, I wouldn't be able to pull out the, the number of warrants with, sus with suspected child abuse or neglect. It would be an aggregate number of warrants. Are you sure about that? Yes. Did you ask somebody in IT staff whether or not you were able to discern which types of warrants there are? No. So how are you so sure? Because I know what we enter into the system. And what do you enter into the system with respect to the warrants? It would say, I believe, protective custody warrant filed. Okay. So if I were to serve you with another subpoena for a production request relative to the data to get the gross numbers of warrants uh, obtained year over year, what would I call that so that you would know exactly what it was I was looking for? You can call it the same thing. But you didn't know what we were looking for here. I you did. didn't produce the data. It's not available today in a document. Right, but it's in an electronic database, correct? Objection, Ms. State's prior testimony. If I'm wrong, tell me. I'm correct, it's an electronic database, right? Well, what are we talking about? You know what we're talking about? We're talking about the warrants, right? Are you with me? 
Yes. Okay. That is maintained in a database from which you can pull or have a customized report to pull the statistics, correct? Traction with state's prior testimony. Go ahead. I can pull an aggregate number of warrants, mm -hmm. not specific to why they were issued. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I can go that far back, as far back as you were requesting, because mm -hmm. I don't know what was there prior to 2015. But you know that you can go back at least for 2015, right? I would look because we implemented our case management system in December of 2015. Okay. Who is the person at your IT, you know, when you told me that you uh, had the ability to get a hold of somebody at the IT department and run customized reports, who is that person? It's not one person, it's a group of people. Have you ever worked with that group? Yes. Who do you typically work with? Not one person in particular. Give me a couple names then. I'll give you a name, um, Rebecca Roth, R-E-B-E-C-C-A. Roth is R-O-T-H. Okay. And what does she do? She's a, an analyst for our court technology department. Who else have you worked with over there besides Rebecca Roth? I've worked with Valerie Sarag, and I don't know how to spell her name. We'll just take a guess at it. Can you say it one more time? It's Valerie Sarag. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. I believe it's S. I'm going to guess S E R A I G. Okay. And what does she do? She's the same as Rebecca. She's also an analyst. Who else have you worked with over there in the past? I have John Leocadio. Can you spell his last J -O -H -N, name? J-O-H-N-L-E-O-C-A-D-I-O. -um, he's also a uh, court tech he's, analyst? He's a manager over technology, one of our technology units. Okay. Anybody else? We also have an analyst, um, Cynthia Beltran, and she's C-Y-N-T-H-I-A, last name Beltran, B-E-L-T-R-A-N, and she's an analyst within the operations unit. What does that mean? So Cynthia supports the juvenile court if I need statistics or she would she would produce the monthly reports that I refer to. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to add to it, I would work with Cynthia. Um, she's familiar with the data. Uh, Rebecca and Valerie um, are also familiar with the data. So just I work with a variety of people to get okay. to get what I need, depending on what I need. Okay. But in this instance, when we were looking for information, um, not just in relation to this deposition, but in relation to documents to be produced, you did not speak with Cynthia Beltran, Rebecca Roth, Valerie Sereg, or John Leo Cadio? Correct. Okay. Is there a reason you didn't? No. Okay. I think you just told me that when you do need customized reports, you do need to extract specific data from the database. Cynthia Beltran is the person that you would talk to to get that done? Not necessarily. It could be any of those people I mentioned. Okay, can I go back uh, two questions, I think, to her last answer? The answer prior to this last one is answer no. Okay, it's going to be the one uh, where she talked about what her last interaction with Cynthia Beltran was. record the time is 11:33 a.m.
We are back on the record. The time is 11.34 a.m. Okay, I'm going to have the court reporter read back to you um, one of your answers to my questions, and then we'll talk about that answer. Go ahead. Answer. So Cynthia supports the juvenile court if I need statistics or she would she would produce the monthly reports that I referred to. So if I wanted to add to it, I would work with Cynthia. She's familiar with the data. Rebecca and Valerie are also familiar with the data, so I just work with a variety of people to get what I need depending on what I need. Do you have any understanding as to the different data sets that those people are um, able to access, or if there are different data sets? What do you mean, okay. data sets? You said that you, you would talk to Cynthia Beltran, but you may also talk to Rebecca and Valerie depending on what you need, right? Right. Okay, under what circumstances would it differ if they all have access to the same data? It doesn't, it's really who's available. Cynthia, okay. Cynthia though, if I can clarify, she's more of the routine, gives me the monthly reports, backlog numbers. So if I wanted something related somewhat to that or something to change within the monthly reports, I would work with Cynthia. Um, but any of them could get me the data that I would request. Okay. And you're pretty sure that at least the aggregate numbers of warrants um, issued year over year would be available at least back to 2015. The number of filings, I would have to check prior to December of 2015. Okay, and the reason for that is because there was a different database back then, right? It was, yes. Uh, it was, it was the, the one you do now is uh, Odyssey, back then it was Banner, is that right? Yes. And you just don't know what customization or custom reports are available for Banner. Am I right about that? Banner doesn't exist anymore. What it, happened to the data? It was converted. Okay, so there was a conversion yes. process. So you actually have the data as far as you know. I would have to look to see if the data existed in Banner because what we have today, some of the, the converted cases, the data just did not exist. It was a very the simple system and what we have today allows for more data <coughs> input so I would have to look to see did we have it in Banner how did it convert over okay and you didn't undertake that effort either in order to prepare, prepare yourself to come and testify here today as the person most knowledgeable for the juvenile court no I did not okay. who would you talk to to find out whether or not the data we're looking for here relative to the numbers of warrants, who would you talk to to find out whether or not that data was something that it was available in Banner? Any of the people that I mentioned. So, Cynthia Beltran, John Leocadio, Rebecca Roth, Valerie Sareg, whoever was available to, okay. to talk with me. Okay. And what was the department? You called it a very specific department again. Was it... Uh, court tech department? Yes, our court technology. Okay. 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 Going on to number three on exhibit B. Your written rules, regulations, memoranda, directives, and any other similar, similarly named slash identified documents relating in any way to removal warrants and or the necessity to obtain them in effect or drafted during the time period beginning January 1st, 2005 and ending December 31st, 2016 and all iterations thereof. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. What efforts, if any, did you undertake to locate documents responsive to that request? I searched through our old file cabinets that have some historical information on um, orders, directives, this thing that you might have described. I could not locate anything there. 
I searched through our SharePoint site, which mm -hmm. also houses um, directives, orders, um, you know, similar documents, and I did the keyword search. I couldn't locate anything there. Um, I also had a binder of um, what I would term as court policies, old administrative orders from um, juvenile presiding judges from the past to the present, and I did search through that as well. Okay. And you located nothing related in any way to warrants in that uh, binder? I did not locate anything related to the removal warrants and, and the necessi necessity to obtain them. What about the or and or? That's disjunctive, right? Yeah, what I, um, I guess I was reading that to be a removal warrant about the necessi necessity to obtain them. Um, what I provided you as far as there was another, um, the next one with number four, um, is what I gave. I, I, I just assumed that, that there was a difference in the two, so I was looking specifically for orders about requiring someone to get them. Okay, number four relates to CWS, CMS, oh, maybe the it wasn't database. Number. Yeah, I apologize. It might not have been number four, but further down. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this: When you went through the binder, did you see any documents in there that related in any way to warrants, yes. whether or not there was a need to obtain them? Just yes. that related to warrants. Yes. What specific documents did you see? Those would be in one of the attachments that I provided. Okay, so you did in fact produce everything you saw that related in any way to warrants. Yes. Okay. Is there a um, well, let me ask this first. Do you know, and you may not know this, but do you know whether or not the juvenile court regularly communicates with the County of Orange about policies and procedures and things like that? Yes, we do. Do you do that by memos, by email? How does that happen? A variety of ways. It could be emails. Most likely it's meetings. Um, orders that are directed, the orders that our juvenile presiding judge issues are um, often um, handed out in meetings or through emails or posted online and they receive a notice. So, okay. yeah. And looking for documents responsive to these requests numbered one through three, did you also look through those emails, uh, meeting notes, orders, memos, things like that? I did, I did the search looking for keywords. Um, emails I wouldn't have back to 2009. I searched my email inbox, mm -hmm. but I've only been there since January of 2015. Did you speak with anybody in the court technology department to ascertain whether or not there was some way that you could get historical information on emails, meeting agendas, orders, and memoranda? The meeting agendas, the memorandums, those would be s stored on our SharePoint site. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, they would have, they would have come up with the keyword search. The emails, no, I did not talk to our court technology department. Is there a reason why you did not? Yes. Uh, other than attorney-client communications, is there a reason you did not uh, talk to your court technology staff to find out whether or not you could locate emails? Our emails are deleted after a year. I appreciate that, but my question really was something like, did you talk? Can I get the question reread, please? Other than attorney client communications, is there a reason you did not talk to the court technology staff okay. to find out whether or not you could locate emails? That's fine, it was responsive. You don't have to answer it okay. again. Number four, that's sort of self-explanatory. You guys, well, maybe you do. Do you know whether or not you, you being the juvenile court, have access to the CWS CMS database? We do not. Okay. Five is information sharing. Now, on request number five, you guys actually produced a bunch of stuff, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, I think it was attachment A. Request number five reads, 
the Orange County Juvenile Court's policies, practices, and procedures with regard to the dissemination, disclosure, and or circulation of information gathered, obtained, learned, or otherwise acquired from or stored within the CWS CMS database. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. Did you undertake any effort to locate documents responsive to that request? Yes. What effort? The same thing. I looked through our files. I looked through the um, SharePoint site, doing keyword searches, and then I read through them to see if anything might fit okay. that description. And you did find things? I believe I did. Okay. I'm going to show you what we'll mark as exhibit number 43 to your deposition. through that I'm just going to verify that that's the total extent of what you believe you produced in response to request number five Have you had a moment to go through exhibit number 43? Yes. And is exhibit number 43 a true and accurate depiction of the totality of the documents that you produced in response to request category number five on exhibit B? Yes. Okay. Now, in looking at exhibit number 43, The first document there appears to be a memo of some kind by Judge Douglas Hachamanji. Is that right? Yes. <coughs> That's about six pages? And it's titled Juvenile Court Administrative Order Number 12-003-903, Exchange of Information? Yes. Then okay. the next document in the pile appears to be an authorization for mediators to receive information from the Orange County Probation Department and the Orange County Social Services agency and that looks like a filed order that was filed on December 21st 2001 is that correct yes and that order was signed by Robert B Hudson yes and it consists of approximately three pages yes the next one in order is a another the next document in order in exhibit number 43 what is that? Similar to what you had prior, it's a miscellaneous order signed by Judge Hudson um, just regarding um, agencies, social services agency being one to exchange information pursuant to um, what we term as a dual status case. Okay, a dual status, what does that mean? They fall in under dependency and delinquency. And then, the, and that's about three pages. Also, that order. Two pages. Two. Yeah, two pages. Okay. The next one in order is miscellaneous order five two eight point seven, and it consists of three pages. You see that? Yes. What is that? The authorization for inspection of records, access to minors, and meeting participation by the Orange County Juvenile Justice Commission. What is the Orange County Juvenile Justice Commission? The, ju the Juvenile Justice Commission is a group of, I think it's seven to 15 um, volunteers 
um, that meet regularly um, for the county and they look at everything related to juvenile justice, um, making sure courts and agencies are, are following rules, that there's no gaps, um, you know, working with our juvenile presiding judge on any issues that they might identify. It's very similar to a grand jury. Okay. And do you have any understanding what sort of information they're entitled to um, get access to? I do not. Okay. All right. And this was an order signed by Carolyn Kirkwood, presiding judge of the juvenile court in 2009 December. Is that right? Yes. Okay, going to the next one in order, it looks like a two-page uh, document. It's titled Miscellaneous Order 535.2. Do you see that? Yes. What is that? That's the authorization for the Orange County Social Services Agency and the Probation Department to release data to a social science research center at the Cal State University of Fullerton. And what is the social science research center? I do not know. All you know is whatever's in this order, right? Yes. So I guess all we know is that they get the data. That's what it. Uh... Do you know whether or not this order is still in effect? I don't believe it is, but I could not find a document that revoked it. And is that the way it normally works? Is if if an order um, is not specifically revoked? it remains in effect indefinitely? Objection calls for a legal conclusion. If you know. I do not know. Okay. But you did look for something revoking this particular order? Yes. Did you look for something revoking any other of the orders that you produced in number 43? What I looked for was the orders, um, again, just searching for anything related to a removal warrant. That would have come up if this specific order was revoked. So because you wanted a history, I was looking to see what's active. I would have included any revocation. Okay. Going on to the next document in order in exhibit number 43. That appears to be a four page document and it's titled Miscellaneous Order 536.2. Do you see that? Yes. What is that one? This is the order authorizing um, information to be shared across different agencies for the Orange County Child Death, Death Review Team. What's that? The death review team. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a group of agency representatives that get together and they review um, deaths, child deaths within Orange County uh, to determine if there was anything that should have been done, any intervention that could have prevented it. Okay, and then this order then is to allow yes. them access to the records so they can do that job. I don't know that it allows access to records as, unless, as much as it allows them authorization to, to hear the information and to look at the information. Got it. Okay. And the next document in order, in exhibit number 43, is a three page document. It's filed April 27, 2005. It's titled Miscellaneous Order 537.1. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, what is that? This is the authorization for sharing information among the Orange County Social Services Agency, um, Children and Family Services, the Orange County Probation Department, the Orange County Housing and Community Services Department, the Workforce Investment Board, City of Santa Ana, Workforce Investment Board, and the City of Anaheim Workforce Investment Board. And when we're talking about the sharing of information, what information is it, if you know? I do not know. And then when you go, that's three pages, you go to the next order in order, in exhibit number 43, that's a order filed September 28, 2005, titled Miscellaneous Order 538.1. Do you see that? Yes. And what is that? That is the authorization for the sharing of information by the Orange County Social Services Agency, the Orange County Probation Department, the Orange County Healthcare Agency, and Children and Fam Family Futures for the purposes of assessing alcohol and substance abuse 
prevalence for effective early intervention, treatment, and program planning. What is children and family futures? I do not know. Okay, the next one in order is another two-page document, miscellaneous order 542.1, filed December 20th, 2007. You see that? Yes. And what is that? The authorization for Orange County Social Services Agency and Probation Department to exchange information pursuant to sections 903.1a and 903.2a of the Welfare and Institutions Code. And then going to the next document in order in exhibit number 43, it's miscellaneous order 741.4, filed December 21st, 2001. You see that? Yes. And what is that? That's the authorization for social services agency to provide information for individual education plans and special education needs of dependent children. Okay. And same with respect to this one. I see it's a 2001 order. Did you check to see whether or not this order had been revoked or amended? Yes, I checked all of them. Okay, and none of them had been? Um, if they were, I included them. I don't, rec I don't recall seeing any that were revoked. Okay. Going to the next one in order in exhibit number uh, 43. It's an order, miscellaneous order number 747.2, filed December 21st, 2001. That's a three page document. You see that? Yes. What is that? The authorization for Orange County Social Services Agency to allow Orangewood Children's Foundation, its contractors, and its subcontractors access to specific specified agency case file data for purposes of facilitating the on-time study. Now, what is the Orangewood Children's Foundation? I do not know. Okay. And its subcontractors and contractors, you don't know what those are either? I do not know. Do you have any understanding as to why it is that this organization would need access to juvenile case file records? Orangewood was a, um, is a, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's a, a care facility um, that houses dependent children or children that were removed from their parents for a short time until they could be placed into foster care. So I would assume that's the foundation piece of it. Um, but I don't have enough knowledge to expound on it. So they might be looking, they were, if you read it, they were probably looking for a specific set of their population. Do you know whether or not, whether, do you know whether the Orangewood Children's Foundation is a governmental agency or a private organization? I do not know. Going to the next one in order in exhibit number 43, it's miscellaneous order 748.2. Filed December 21st, 2001. You see that? Yes. And what is that? The authorization for Orange County Social Services Agency to release data to the Sphere Institute. Do you know what the Sphere Institute is? I do not. Okay. Do you know if that's a governmental agency or a private organization? I do not know. And that was a two page order, correct? It's a two page order and the attachment. Oh, I see. Yeah. The attachment would include the four following pages yeah. in order in Exhibit 43, is that right? Yes. Okay. And that's titled Confidentiality Agreement for Data Exchange between the Sphere Institute and the Orange County Social Services Agency? Yes. Do you have any understanding what the evaluation of the assistance to high-risk families early action program, contract number 512169, do you have any knowledge what that is? I do not. <clears throat> okay, the next document in order in exhibit number 43 is a miscellaneous order numbered 749.3 dated or I guess filed December 16th 2010 it looks like a one page order do you see that yes and what is that the authorization for the consortium for children to receive information from the Orange County Social Services Agency for the purposes of permanency planning mediation and creating family connections 
do you know if that long thing you just read, the consortium for children to receive information from the Orange County Social Services Agency for purposes of permanency planning, mediation, and creating family connections, do you know if that's a governmental uh, organization or a private organization? I do not know. The next one in order appears to be a three-page order numbered 751.2 dated August 9th, 2011. You see that? Yes. And what is that? The authorization for sharing of information among the Orange County Social Services Agency, Children and Family Services, the Orange County Healthcare Agency, the Orange County Probation Department, the Orange County Department of Education, and the Orangewood Children's Foundation. There's that Orangewood Children's Foundation again. And just to reiterate, make sure I'm correct, you don't know whether the Orangewood Children's Foundation is a governmental agency or a private foundation. Is that right? Correct. I, I don't know for, for certain. Okay. The next one in order is miscellaneous order number 57. I'm sorry, scratch that. Miscellaneous Order 752.1, filed August 26, 2003. Do you see that? Yes. And what is that? The authorization for Orange County Social Services Agency, agency to share specified information with the Central Justice Center Domestic Violence Coordination Team. Do you know what that is, the Central Justice Center Domestic Violence Coordination Team? I do not. And that, again, is a two-page order, correct? It's a two-page order and then two, one, two, three attachments. Okay, so for the total, totality of that document would be, uh, the first would include the first page with the filed stamp on it, dated August 26, 2003, and then the four pages following that first page, correct? Yes. Okay. Next one is in order. In Exhibit 43 is Miscellaneous Order 755.1, filed May 14, 2004. Do you see that? Yes. And what is that? That's the authorization for Orange County Social Services Agency to release data to the National Center on Crime and Delinquency. Do you know whether the National Council on Crime and Delinquency is a governmental agency or a private uh, agency? I do not know. And that consists of two pages, correct? Yes. The next one in order in Exhibit 43 is Miscellaneous Order 756.1, dated May 19th, 2004. Do you see that? Yes. And that looks like it consists of three pages, right? Yes. What is that? That's the authorization for Orange County Social Services agent Agency to release data to the federal grantee projects to develop programs to strengthen marriages project team. Okay, and this uh, project to develop programs to strengthen marriages, do you know if that's a governmental agency or a private organization? I do not know. And the last page in exhibit number 43, looks like a certification of the documents that we've just gone through. Yes. Okay, and it was your intention in executing this certification to say that, yeah, this is, these are all true, accurate, and complete copies of what they purport to be? Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. I know that was sort of a drudgery. Good time to take a quick break? Yeah, we can take a break, sure. We are off the record. The time is 12.03 p.m. We are back on the record. The time is 12.15 p.m. Okay, and just to reiterate, um, exhibit number 43, is that the entirety of responsive documents that you were able to locate with respect to category number five? Yes. Okay. Going on to category num number six on exhibit B, says any and all communications between you and the County of Orange relating to the process and or procedures to be followed in obtaining warrants, removal warrants, 
during the time period beginning January 1st, 2005 and ending December 31st, 2015, including all amendments or changes thereto. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Were there any communications between the um, Orange County Juvenile Court and the County of Orange relating to the process and or procedures to be followed in obtaining removal warrants during that time period? I could not locate any. Okay, and what did you do to try to find them? Again, I looked through files to see if anyone had saved some documentation. I looked through the SharePoint site using keyword searches. Did you speak with anybody? No, I did not. So you didn't talk to maybe Barbara Jew, see if she had any no, ideas? No, I did not. Okay. <clears throat> Did you talk to any of the judges, particularly the presiding judge, in um, preparing yourself to testify here today as the person most knowledgeable for the juvenile court? No, I did not. Who was the presiding judge in 2000, the 2009, 2010 timeframe, if you know? I do not know. Okay. And uh, did you mean of the- letter? Juvenile court, yeah. Juvenile court yeah. presiding judge. Yeah. You don't know that either, right? Um, no, not off the top of my head. Okay. And number seven. Going on to category number seven on exhibit B, any and all communications between you and the County of Orange during the time period beginning January 1st, 2005, ending December 31st, 2015, relating in any way to the requirement that a warrant be obtained prior to removing a child from the custody of its parents unless there's a legal exception that applies, i.e. exigency. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. Were you able to locate any communications of any kind, emails, memos, anything between the juvenile court and the county of Orange relative to that issue? No, I did not. Okay, and what steps did you take to uh, locate documents? Again, I searched through file folders. I searched our SharePoint site. Um, I did ask a couple people if Orange County, if they were aware, and this would be Barbara Jew and Blanca Escobedo, if they were aware if Orange County um, issued a directive or required the social service agencies to file the warrant. And just based on their knowledge, they did not believe anything that ever happened. Oh, yeah. So. When you say that ever happened, let me make sure I'm understanding correctly that the juvenile court never issued a directive to the County of Orange to start filing these warrant applications. Correct. Okay. So to the extent that Orange County started doing that, it's not something that had its genesis in the juvenile court, right? It's not something that began or emanated from the juvenile court. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> At least as far as you know. Correct. Right. Okay, and then number eight on exhibit B says your rules, regulations, memoranda, directives, orders, customs, practices, procedures, and the like relating to removal warrants in effect or drafted at any time between January 1st, 2005 and December 31st, 2015 and any iteration, any slash all iterations thereof. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. Okay, and when you first uh, received this subpoena, did you understand everything there? Yes. Okay. Were you able to locate documents responsive to request number eight? A few, yes. Okay. It's, hold on one second. Okay, I'm going to show you what we will mark as exhibit number 44 to your deposition. take a few moments to look through exhibit number 44. I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Okay.
you had a chance to look through exhibit number 44? Yes. What is exhibit number 44? These are the procedures um, that I found, the procedural type documentation that I found related to uh, removal type warrants. Okay. And when you say removal type warrants, is that the type of warrant that would be sought when we are seeking a warrant or similar court order issued by a judge of the Superior Court of California, County of Orange, authorizing the Orange County Child Protective Services to take custody of a child from his or her parent or parents based on suspected child abuse or neglect? Yes. Okay, looking at the first document in Exhibit 44, it appears to be a two-page document signed by Judge Douglas J. Hachimanji. And I can't tell what day of November that was. Can you tell? 15th. 15th. And that would have been 2011? Yes. What, what is this document? This is the after hour and holiday emergency um, authorization for emergency mental consent requests, probable cause declarations, and dependency warrants. Okay. Now, a dependency warrant, is that the type of warrant that we would get to remove a child from the custody of its parents? Yes. Is that what you guys call it? Yes. Okay. Different counties call them different things. Some places call them removal warrants, some are detention warrants, some are, at Riverside calls them both protective custody warrants. So everybody has their own name, so I'm always confused. So you guys are dependency warrants, or I, I'm sorry, say it again. We refer to them as dependency warrants, protective custody warrants. We use the two terms interchangeably. Okay, but a protective custody warrant, that's the type of warrant we would get, for example, for an AWOL child under WIC 340, correct? It could be. Okay, is there a different type of protective custody warrant that you know It could be of? anything they want to issue a warrant on to protect the child. How would you distinguish a protective custody warrant, uh, according to your definition, from a dependency warrant? They would be the same. We're looking at the forms that are being filed. Okay. What are the forms called? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Did you bring any of those forms? No. Did you produce any of those forms? No. You would agree, though, that those forms relate in some way to the warrant, right? Yes. Is there a reason you didn't produce copies of those forms? They're not court forms. Whose forms are they? Social services. Okay. okay. This particular order by Judge Hachimanji, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's dated November 2011. Do you know whether or not there is a similar order dated with an earlier date. I could not locate one. Okay. So just so that I'm clear, this order that's the first order in Exhibit 44, that is the earliest order you could find uh, relating to after hours and holiday emergency warrants. Yes. Moving on to the next one in order. I don't know if we identified the first one or not. Let me just do that. It's Juvenile Court Administrative Order Number 11-002, correct? Yes. Okay, the next one in order appears to be a multi-page document. Actually, let me just ask you this first. The, there's a whole bunch of pages, some forms and stuff that follow the next order identified as order number 12-009, are those part of that order or are they something separate? They're separate. Okay, so let's just do the order first then. Looking at Juvenile Court Administrative Order number 12-009, it's dated June 7th, 2012, also signed by Judge Hachimanji, correct? Yes. What is that? This is the protect protective custody warrant submission cutoff and request for night service order. 
Okay, and I notice that that's also dated June 2012, right? Yes. Were you able to find anything relative to the seeking or obtaining of warrants to remove children from the custody of their parents prior to these two orders that we've looked at here, that being uh, the 2011 order and the 2012 order we're looking at right now? I could not locate anything specific for that. I'm sorry? I could not locate anything specific to that. The orders that were older would be the ones that are included here. But the procedural ones giving direction to social service, this was all I could find. Okay, and when you say here, you reference exhibit number 43? Yes. And exhibit number 43 contains the orders authorizing the release and exchange of information, right? Yes. They, they don't. The documents contained in exhibit number 43 don't relate to seeking or obtaining warrants from the court. Correct. The only documents, the only orders that you were able to locate that related in any way at all to seeking or obtaining warrants from the juvenile court are those that you've produced here to us today that were produced to us earlier that we've identified here today as exhibit number 44 to your deposition. Correct. Okay. And what steps did you take to locate um, the court's orders relative to um, seeking or obtaining warrants to remove children from the custody of their parents? I searched through our old file cabinets. I did search through policy binders. I searched our SharePoint site, which is our electronic storage of the documentations for keywords. Okay. Anything else? No, yeah, that's, that's it. Did you speak with anybody? No. Did you go talk at all with Judge Hachamanji? No. Okay, the next document in order, it's titled Dependency E-Warrant Procedure, Office of the Juvenile Presiding Judge. Do you see that? Yes. What is that? These are older procedures that we put into place um, to process the dependency warrants from a perspective of a clerical support standpoint, not how social services gets them, not how the judge does them, but what happens when we get them back. Okay. I notice this is not dated. Yes. Do you know when this document was created? I do not know. Do you know who created the document? I do not know. Where did you locate the document? Off of our SharePoint site. SharePoint. Now the document as it appears on your SharePoint site, that's an electronic form, correct? Electronic. So you're sitting there, but actually let me just ask you this. Say you want to get on the SharePoint site to go look for something. You told me earlier you can do keyword searches, right? Yes. So it's done on a computer, right? Yes. Okay, so it's on a site somewhere, right? Yes. Yes. It's in electronic form. It comes up as a picture on your screen, mm -hmm. right? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when you go into the SharePoint site, you see a picture on your screen. Do you have the ability to actually access that file? I can, it's a document that I view. Let me ask it this way. Are you familiar with Microsoft Word? Yes. Okay, you've used it before? Yes. And to open a file, you would like go into Microsoft Word and then go click on a specific file. It would open the file, then you have a document on the screen. Yes. Is SharePoint similar to that? Yes, it stores Word forms and PDF forms. Okay. Do you recall whether or not this was a Word document? I do not recall. Okay. If I were to send you a new subpoena with a request for production of documents for the electronically stored information, what would I call this document so that you would know exactly which file I'm looking for? I guess I don't understand what you're asking. Okay, you just told me that this document that is represented on this piece of paper yes. is stored in electronic format somewhere. Correct. And you can access it through SharePoint. If I wanted to get a copy of that electronic file, what would I call it so you would know exactly what I want you to produce? I would refer to it as electronic file. Okay, electronic file, any title? I don't, know I don't know how it's saved in the system. 
dependency e-warrant procedure. Let's do it this way. How about if we were to call it page five of exhibit 44, would that be a sufficient identification for you so that you would know exactly which file we're looking for? Yes. Okay. And this form that it talks about up here, the form F063-28-new, you see that? Yes. Is that a court form or some other kind of form? That is not a court form. Okay. Do you know whose form that is? I believe that's Social Services Agency form. Okay. Do you know whose form that is? I believe that's Social Services Agency form. Okay, the next page in order, in exhibit number 44, that'd be six pages in. And that appears to consist of five pages. Am I correct about that? Yes. Okay, what is that? Similar to the previous form, it's an updated version of clerical procedures on how to handle the warrant once it comes to us. Okay, and it looks like this is all. Where did you locate this document? Off of our SharePoint site. SharePoint. So it looks like this also came um, as a printout of an electronic document, right? Yes. Okay, and what, if I wanted you to produce the electronic document in its native form, what would I call this so that you would know exactly which file I'm talking about? I would reference the page number and the attachment like you do the other one. Okay. It's dependency warrant procedure. So if we'd, we'd call it the warrant dependency warrant procedure beginning at page 6 of exhibit 44? Yes. Let me just do this now while I'm on it. Will you, uh, this is for counsel, will you agree to just produce those files to us so we don't have to serve a new subpoena? I'm not authorized to do that at this point, but I will communicate your request. Okay. Secondarily, uh, are you authorized to accept another subpoena? Or do we just need to serve them directly? I think you need to go back through the procedure. Okay. Need to call. Right. But I will forward your inquiry. Okay, appreciate it. Do you know when this procedure that, that begins at page 6 of Exhibit 44, do you know when it was first implemented? I do not. We know the Odyssey updates were in June of 2015, right? Yes. And we know that by looking at the last page, of ex or second to the last page of Exhibit 44. Yes. Is there any way you can tell by looking at this dependency warrants procedure when it was that it was first implemented? No. It would go back to the implementation date of this one. This is the updated version. Right. Okay. That's sort of what I figured, but. Yeah. I'm not the one that's working there. I have no idea how you guys actually maintain this stuff. And then same with respect to exhibit number 43, the very last page is the certification. You see that? Yes. And it was your, was it your intention uh, by certifying the documents contained in exhibit 44 to represent to us that these are true and accurate and complete depictions of the documents they purport to be? Yes. Okay, going on to number nine, category number nine in exhibit B, <clears throat> says any and all documents, emails, letters, memoranda, and or communications with the County of Orange regarding the development, creation, formation, adequacy, and or implementation of, and this looks like an error, of the any process, protocol, and or procedure that a county social worker would follow to obtain a removal warrant. First of all, did I read that correctly? Yes. Did you understand what we were looking for when you read it? Yes. Okay. Were you able to locate any documents responsive to that request? 
I could not. Okay, what did you do in making the attempt? I searched through our file cabinet. I searched through um, our SharePoint site. What about binders? Were there any binders with emails, letters, or memoranda? The binder I searched through was mostly policies. Didn't have, I don't have a binder of memorandum. Did you talk to anybody to find out if there were any memoranda or letters or other types of communications with the County of Orange relative to the development of a warrant policy? I asked uh, Barbara Jew and Blanca Escobedo um, if they knew if we issued any, again, directive or gave them procedures on how to handle the removal warrants, and to their recollection, they could not think of any. Now, when you spoke with Barbara Jew, was this in the same two- or three-minute conversation that we talked about earlier? Yes. Did you have um, Exhibit B in your hands when you yes. spoke with her? I'm sorry, yes. Did you go through it together? Not, the, not in its entirety, no. Okay. Which, which items here did you go through with? Which items listed, which categories listed on Exhibit B did you go through with Barbara Jew? I don't recall the specific items. But you do recall that this uh, category number nine is one of the things you did go through with her? Yes. Okay. And she didn't remember anything? She couldn't think of any anything that was sent to our social services agency or county council that direct, gave them direction to file the warrants or how to do that. Well, you would agree with me, wouldn't you, that when you're putting a new process in place, the court has to come up, or somebody at the court has to come up with the procedures that you're going to follow to make that new process work, right? Yes. Okay. For example, a warrant process. If we're going to start applying for warrants, there's got to be something in place so the court knows what to do with those applications, right? Yes. And developing those processes and procedures, isn't there some communication that goes on between the court and the county? Yes. Okay. How does that happen? It could be meetings. It could be informal conversations. Again, directives from the juvenile presiding judge to, to tell an agency this is what you're going to have to do. Mm -hmm. Or how you're going to have to do it. Yes. Did you look for those types of things? Yes, I did. Okay, and you didn't find anything at all? No, nothing. The only thing that you found was this, these 2011 and 2012 orders, I think it was from Judge Hachimoji, um, related to after hours warrants. Yes. Do you know who held your position back in the 2000, not the position that you hold today, who held that position back in 2009, 2010? I don't know for certain. Give me your best estimate. I don't think I could. We've had a succession of unit managers. I can tell you the past three, but I do not know the dates. Okay, who are the past three? So myself, mm -hmm. of the most recent, Anna Ruth Gonzalez. I'm sorry? Anna Ruth Gonzalez, A-N-A-R-U-T-H. I'm going to guess on the spelling of Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-S. Um, and then Michelle Norhausen also held my position. And that's probably uh, like H-A-U-S-E. -E. Yeah, it's N O R. I think it's H-A-U-S-E-N. Yeah. And you know before her? I don't. I don't know before Michelle. Okay. And you don't know how long each of them held those positions? I do not. Do you know if M Michelle Norhausen is still with the court? Michelle is still with the court. And what about Anna Ruth Gonzalez? Do you know if she's still with the court? She is no longer with the court. Do you know if she is still in the Orange County area? Do you mean where she resides? Yes. I believe she's still in Orange County. And do you know what city? I believe it's Mission Viejo. When's the last time that you spoke with Ms. Gonzalez? I'm going to guess it was sometime in 2016. Outside of work? Yes. Are you guys friends? Yes. Do you know her email address? 
I have a work email address. Oh, you only have a work email address yes. for her? You mean her old email address with the court, or do you mean her new job? I have her new email address. What is that? Well, I don't know it off the top of my head. How about her I phone have number? access to it. Okay, how about her phone number? I don't have that off the top of my head well, either. You said that you have her new work email address. Where does she work? LA Superior Court. Do you know what particular division? I believe she's over family law and probate. Do you know what position she holds? I do not know the title. Okay. Was she the one who you were replacing? Yes. Was she the one that you sort of um, paired with between January and March? No. Who did you pair with? During Blan Blanca Escobedo. Okay. Did she also hold the same position? No. What did she hold? What position? She would have been, Blanca would have been a deputy manager. Do you know how long Blanca had served as a deputy manager before you? It was approximately a year. Do you know how long she'd been with the juvenile court before you came on board over there? It was approximately a year. Okay. So she was new too? Yes. Got a lot of people to talk to. All right, let's move on to number 10. Any and all documents, emails, letters, memoranda, and or communications with the County of Orange regarding county social workers seeking, obtaining, and or failing to obtain removal warrants. First of all, did I read that correctly? Yes. Did you undertake any efforts at all to locate documents responsive to that request? The same search. I searched file folders and our SharePoint site. Did you speak with anybody? No, I did not. If, uh, let me just ask you, and you may not know this, if somebody, what do you, what do you call people that use court services? Uh, I don't mean the government people, I mean just like, you know, normal people. Mm. Are they clients? Are they customers? What are they? Well, we can refer to them as a variety of things, customers, um, litigants, mm -hmm. the public. Do you, have a, do you have a process in place by which the public can make a complaint to the court? Yes. Okay, and by complaint, I mean like a service complaint, not like filing a lawsuit. <coughs> yes. Okay. What do you refer to that as, that process? I believe we just refer to them as customer complaints. Do you know whether or not you've ever received a customer complaint regarding a social services agent agent's failure to obtain a warrant before removing a child from the custody of its parents? I have not received such a complaint. Do you know whether or not the court has received such a complaint? I do not know. Okay. Who would you ask to find out? I would ask our juvenile presiding judge. Who's that? Maria Hernandez. Do you know how long she's been uh, the juvenile presiding judge? I do not. Do you know who the juvenile presiding judge was before her? Judge Hachimanji. And I presume Judge, I think it was Hutton or Hudson was before him? I don't know the succession. Mm -hmm. Judge Hudson was a juvenile presiding judge at one time. I don't know how long ago. I think he was back in 2001. That's one of these yeah. orders or something. It's 2001. Okay. And you, but you didn't, um, in looking for documents responsive to any of these requests, you did not go and seek input from Judge Maria Hernandez, correct? Objection. Official information privilege. 
Are you asking substance or the fact of? The fact of. Okay, do you understand the difference? No. Okay, in seeking to locate documents responsive to any of the requests stated in exhibit number B, did you talk to Judge Hernandez? I showed her the subpoena. Okay. Did you ask her if she had responsive documents? I did not. Why were you showing her the subpoena? We had not received one before, and so I said, is this something that we take in here? I, I was just trying to figure out what to do with it. Okay, and what'd she tell you? Objection, official information, privilege, and do not answer the question. Are you gonna follow your attorney's instruction? Yes. Okay. So the, what she told, what the judge told her to do with respect to the treatment of the subpoena, you're saying is official information? Is that, is that the basis? I'm trying to meet and confer with you because we're going to compel on this. Uh, this isn't the place for a meet and confer. Okay, so you're it's refusing enough. to meet and confer at the deposition. You'll get a letter. That's fine. Did you talk to any other judge besides Judge Hernandez about the subpoena? Objection. Official information privilege. You're instructed not to answer. Okay. okay just the fact of the conversation is privileged is what you're saying. I have a question back, please. Did you talk to any judge besides Judge Hernandez about the subpoena? Without divulging any substance, you can answer the question. No. Okay. So Judge Hernandez was the only judicial officer that you spoke with with respect to the subpoena? Yes. How long was that conversation? I don't recall. Give me an estimate. 20 minutes? No. 10 minutes? Mm. I don't know. Under 20. Under 20. Where did it take place? In her chambers. Were you sitting or standing? I don't recall. Was there anybody else there with you besides the judge? No. And just so that I'm clear, so that I don't need to ask all the other questions, I would ask anything related to the substance of that conversation with the judge, you're instructing her not to respond, correct? Correct. Do you know whether or not prior to March 2010, removal warrants were being processed by the juvenile court? I do not know. Okay. Did you undertake in preparing to testify here today as the person most knowledgeable for the juvenile court, did you undertake any effort to find out? I did not other than to ask when we started seeing these processes or procedures. And the only conversation where you asked anybody about when, you, when the court started to see these processes and procedures was that two to three minute conversation with Barbara Jew? Correct. Do you know whether or not the court has ever tracked the trending data with respect to um, how many warrants the County of Orange has sought since the time that it first began seeking warrants? We do not track that. Okay, you don't have like a warrant log or something? No. Okay. Do you have any understanding approximately how many warrants are sought per year? I do not know. How would you go about finding out? Our database, those reports that we talked about. Okay, the ones we talked about earlier? Correct where you would ask for a customized report from whatever it was, your technology 
I don't remember what you called it. Our court technology department, yes. Right. Okay. And you didn't do that in preparing for your deposition here today? No. Okay. No, you didn't do no, that? No, I did not do that. Okay. Do you have any understanding as to why it was that Orange County started making these applications to get warrants? I do not have that information. With respect to the internal procedures that uh, the court follows when it receives a warrant application, did you produce those to me? Yes. Okay, and that, that was in exhibit number 44? Yes. And just for clarification, when you say warrant, are you referring to the ones involving juveniles? Yes. She only, you're only here for the juvenile court, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that's the only warrant I'm talking about. Yes. And in exhibit four, um, that sort of procedure outline, is that the only one that you could locate? It's the procedure outline mm -hmm. and then the updated dependency warrant procedure. Right. And that dependency, the procedure outline, I think it was at page five or so, page six of exhibit 44. I'm correct, you don't know when that was first implemented, right? Correct. Okay. That's one where we'd have to look at the metadata on the file to figure it out. I don't think that would help because we imaged it and shared, saved it to SharePoint later. Mm -hmm. So I don't have an origination date for this this particular procedure. Okay, we're still probably going to want the original source file, but sure. we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, and you don't know who it was that actually drafted that particular procedure, do you? Correct, I do not know. Okay. Who'd you ask to find out? I would probably ask Barbara Jew. Do you know whether or not a warrant to remove a child from the custody of its parents or parent can be issued by telephone? Is there a procedure in place to get telephone warrants? There's a, I don't know that it can be issued solely by telephone. Mm -hmm. But it can be sought by telephone to be followed up later with a writing? Probably not followed up later in writing. Why don't we do this? Explain the procedure for me. So if it's it's after hours, after court hours, and they want to seek a, a warrant, um, they can call the judge who's serving as a night night duty judge. Um, there's a telephone that they can call. They also have a iPad, and I believe they might have a fax machine where they would send over the the document electronically, if you will. Okay. And then the judge could over the telephone give the authorization? They would, yes, but they would also have an electronic signature. Okay, that's yeah. what the yeah. Yes. That makes sense. Do you know how long it takes from the time that, say I'm a social worker, I'm out in the field, I need to call in and do all this stuff to get a warrant. Do you know how long it takes to get that warrant issued? I do not know. Does the court have any kind of uh, expectations or guidelines about how long it should take to issue a warrant? No, it does not. Okay. Does the court track um, the statistics regarding how long it takes to obtain a warrant? No, we do not. Okay. Is there a reason why not? I don't know that we Care. could use that information. <laughs> All right. And the, is there a policy or written procedure regarding the issuance of warrants or the application for warrants by telephone? Or is that included in that exhibit? I believe the night magistrate, I forgot what they titled it, the after hour and holiday emergency medical consent request um, in attachment, what is it, exhibit 44, uh, and then the I think there was the timing of the hours okay. uh, request for night service. 
Now, with respect to the medical, uh, the warrant to obtain a medical examination or medical evaluation, that's a different warrant, correct? It's a different type of warrant. Yeah. Same process to get one? Yes. Okay. When did you guys start that process? I did. It's actually relevant outside the scope. It's relevant. No, it's not. <laughs> that is. Anyway, you can go ahead and answer. He doesn't have standing to instruct you. Join. You can go ahead and answer. You can answer. answer. Um, can you repeat the question? Can I have it reread? He distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when did you guys start that process? I do not have that information. Um, do you know whether or not it was before 2015, the time that you started? Yes. Okay, so it was already in place in 2015? Yes. Do you have any understanding as to whether or not it was in place in 2012? I don't know. Okay, who would you talk to to find out? Well, I would go back and do the same research. Because okay. you're referring to the medical consent still, right. correct? Yes. <clears throat> What about to uh, interrogate a child at school? <coughs> is there a warrant that you guys would issue that would relate to the interrogation of a ch child at school? Yes. Objection, relevance, outside the scope. Join. What is that called? We refer to it as a dependency warrant. Okay, so it's the same warrant as we would use to remove a child from the custody of its parents? We refer to it as the same thing. I don't know that it's the same warrant, okay. but it's the, we just refer to it as dependency warrant. Do we use the same process as what's outlined in Exhibit 44? Yes. Do you know when it was that Orange County first started seeking warrants from your court to interrogate children at school? Objection, okay. relevance outside the scope. Join. Go Your ahead. Answer. Yeah, I do not know. Were they doing it when you joined in 2015? Yes. Okay. Prior to 2015, you don't know? Correct. Who would you talk to to find out? I would do the same research I did and talk to the same people, Barbara Jew, Juan okay. Escobedo. Okay. So there's nobody other than Miss um, Escobedo and Miss <coughs> Jew that you would speak to to find out information about when the court started first processing these warrants to do school interrogations or interviews? Correct. Okay. Same with respect to the medical warrants? Correct. Okay. Now, am I correct, and I may, I may not be, but am I correct that prior to 2009, the court had the ability on request to issue a warrant to remove a child from the custody of its parents if such a request had been made? Objection calls for speculation on its foundation. Go ahead. Calls for a legal conclusion. You can answer. Oh, um or, sir, repeat the question. Sure. Okay, now am I correct, and I may, I may not be, but am I correct that prior to 2009, the court had the ability on request to issue a warrant to remove a child from the custody of its parents if such a request had been made? I wouldn't know for certain. I would assume yes. Who would you talk to to find out for certain? I would probably ask a judge. Okay, like... Uh, Judge Hernandez, maybe? Yes. Okay. But we do know that through your conversations with Barbara Jew, sometime after 2009, could have been 2009, 2010, you're really not sure, the court certainly had the ability because it started issuing warrants, right? Yes. Okay. Where would you look to find out whether or not the court had issued a removal warrant 
prior to 2010? I would see if we had, I would try to find a case file that had one. Mm -hmm. I would look to see if that data exists. Um, that would be about the only way I think I would be able to tell if something had been issued that far back. And how would you go about locating such a case file? I would work with my technology department to take a look at the data to see if it existed back then. Okay. Now, do you know or are you familiar with the nature of the data that is available to you in that Odyssey system? Yes. Okay. Describe for me some of the different data fields that you're able to um, look at through the Odyssey system. Okay, there's a lot. Yeah, um, I, I assumed as much. Okay, so you have um, case specific, you can look up data on um, who the person is, a little bit about them as far as demographics, addresses, parents, um, the parties of the case. Um, specific to the actual case, I can see what type of petition was filed, when it was filed, hearing dates, um, minute orders. dispositions. Sorry, I'm going through um, all the different windows in, in, my, in my head. Um, I could see if parental rights were terminated. I could see the result of the hearings, who the judge was, what department it was heard, who the case was assigned to. There, there's a lot I would, I would have to. Okay. When we're talking about um, results of the hearings, there's several different hearings in the juvenile dependency, and I just want to focus on dependency for a moment. Okay. I know that you oversee both delinquency and dependency. But in a juvenile dependency proceeding, there's several different hearings that you can potentially end up going to throughout the process, right? Yes. And when you're looking at hearing results that are maintained in the database, does it track them by particular hearing? So for example, if I wanted to know what happened at a uh, status hearing on a certain date, I could go in and see it? The results I'm talking about are whether or not the hearing was heard, continued, placed off calendar. Um, I can look at a I would have to look into the minute order to see what actually, what orders and findings were made at that hearing. Some of those are saved as data, but some are not. Okay. Is there a particular point in time when you said some are saved as data, some are not? The ones that are not, are the, those are the ones where you'd have to actually look at the minute order. Yes. And is that minute order imaged in, in electronic form so you can just click on it and do that? Yes. Okay. Excuse me, counsel, we should do a disc change in about two minutes. Oh, why don't we just take a break and do that? We are off the record. This concludes disc one of the deposition. The time is 1.04 p.m. We are back on the record. This begins disc two of the deposition. The time is 1.15 p.m. Okay, and then with respect to the ones where it's entered in data form as opposed to the image file, are you able to search on those in some way? Yes, but to be clear, there's always a minute order but some elements of the minute order are saved as data. Got it. So. Okay. So, for example, if we have a detention hearing and at detention the case was dismissed, would that be represented as data or minute order? Both. Both. Yes. Okay. So, for example, you could commission a customized search to search through all the cases where there was a detention hearing and the case was dismissed at detention? I could do that for cases after December 7, 2015. Again, our converted data, I would have to check to see if it was the same. Our former case management mm -hmm. system didn't hold a lot of data, mm -hmm. so I would have to look. But after 2000, December 7, 2015, I could search. Okay. I could, requ I could request a custom search. I, I couldn't just go in and do it myself. Okay. And you're just not sure of the data set that's available prior to December 7th, 2015? Correct. Okay. 
it may or may not be there. Correct. Who would you talk to to find out? Our court technology, I'd have to review the files and see what actually converted over and how it converted over. If we didn't store it before, again, it, it didn't have very many data elements, our previous case management system, so there's a lot of missing data when you look at old cases today. Okay. Um, you said core technology. Is there some sort of manual or something that tells you what got converted and what didn't? I don't know. I, so what would you look at? I would talk to people. Okay. There may be a manual, some documentation. I, I don't know. I, I don't have it. Okay. But it would be people over at uh, which department? The court technology department. Court, oh, court technology. Oh. I heard court. I was wondering, oh, that's something new. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no problem. Okay, and that again would be the, the difference between the Odyssey and the Banner systems. Yes. Right. Okay. So you'd have, have to essentially talk to somebody over at Court Technology to find out what the data set was that the Banner system was working with. Yes. Okay. And whether or not that data, when you did the conversion, included, for example, hearing dispositions and things like that. Yes. Do you know, and you may not know this, do you know who it was that initiated the discussion regarding creating a procedure to get removal warrants? Was it something that started with the court or something that started with the county? My understanding is it's the county initiated the discussion. Okay, and how did you, under, how did you obtain that understanding? Talking with Barbara Jew and Blanca Escobedo. Did you develop any understanding as to why it was the county um, initiated that discussion? I did not ask. Okay. And I think from your prior testimony, it's your understanding that that discussion about implementing a procedure to get warrants to remove children from the custody of their parents started sometime around 2009. Yes. Do you know when it was actually, when that discussion bore fruit, that is, yielded a policy? I do not know. Okay. Clearly it was sometime after the discussion started. Correct, and we don't have a policy, so. Right. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that prior to the time that the county started talking to the court about implementing a procedure to obtain warrants to remove children from the custody of their parents, prior to that time, the county didn't get such warrants. I don't know that to be true. I don't know. Well, if there's not a procedure in place, how would they do it? Objection, calls for speculation. You may answer. Well, you can always file a request for anything and put it in front of the judge. <coughs> you know, whether it's a warrant or a motion, they could file anything at any time. Whether well, or not they, you know, put a warrant from the judge for that purpose, I don't know. Well, to file something other than an initiating document, there's got to be a case number, right? Doesn't there have to be a case assigned to a child somehow? Not necessarily. So you can just randomly come in and file a paper identifying a child and get an order? Objection calls for the legal conclusion. As a matter of process, isn't there a procedure whereby you initiate proceedings? We get documents for different things that don't have an initiating case. Let's just focus for a minute on juvenile dependency. Okay. Okay. And exclude from our inquiry warrants because now we know that they do get warrants, mm -hmm. right? Mm hmm. Yes? Yes. And we know that warrants necessarily precede a case, right? They could, yes. When we're talking about a removal warrant, that is a warrant to remove a child from the custody of its parents when there is no case pending. Yes. Okay. There's no case assigned to that warrant. It's just coming in, right? Yes. Okay. 
prior or outside of that context where you know, we're not seeking warrants, we're not talking about that, are there any other types of filings that can be made without being associated with a case? I would have to look. You, you don't know off the top of your head? No. Okay. Because it's not that common, otherwise you would know off the top of your head. Correct. Okay. Do you know whether or not the court played any role in assisting the county in developing any of its warrant policies or procedures? I do not know. Who would you talk to to find out? Probably whoever was the unit manager back in 2009. Okay. And you don't know who that was as you're sitting here today? Correct. Okay. Do you know approximately how many juvenile dependency cases get processed through your court on a monthly basis currently? I do not. Do you know approximately how many warrants get processed through your court on a monthly base basis currently? I do not know. Who would you talk to to find out? I'd probably have to see if we have statistics or data that I could pull to find that information. Okay, and you didn't do that in preparing to Correct. testify? Looking at category number 18 on Exhibit A, that's designated area of inquiry, number 18. And it reads, communications with the County of Orange regarding the development, creation, formation, adequacy, and or implementation and here's an error again, of the any process, protocol, and or procedure that a county social worker would follow to obtain ju judicial authorization, a warrant, and or court order to remove a child from his or her parent's custody and or care. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. And did you understand it when you read it? Yes. What steps, if any, did you take to make yourself the person most knowledgeable at the Orange County Juvenile Court to testify in relation to category number 18? I searched through our files, our SharePoint site, looking for any communication that the court may have saved. Okay. And you didn't find anything? I did not find anything. Did you then go speak to somebody to find out what communications, if any, had taken place? I did not. Is there a reason why not? No. Okay. Same with respect to category number 17, which reads, the Orange County Juvenile Court's policies, practices, and procedures with regard to the dissemination, disclosure, and or circulation of information gathered, obtained, learned, or otherwise acquired from or stored within the CWS CMS database. First, did I read that correctly? Yes. What efforts, if any, did you undertake to make yourself the person most knowledgeable to testify, qualified to testify as the voice of the juvenile court for the county of Orange regarding category number 17. <coughs> I apologize, did you ask me what steps I took? To yeah, what did you do, yeah. if anything? So I, I, I searched for the mm -hmm. files and as far as disseminating disclosure, that is in the sharing of information attachment. So I searched the files, I searched through our, our policy binder and I searched our SharePoint site. Okay. And, and that was to locate documents, right? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you talk to anybody to obtain knowledge or understanding outside of looking for documents? Did you speak with somebody? I did not. Okay. Why not? Well, the people around back then are not no longer with the court. So the people that would have had the historical knowledge that I would have spoken to are no longer there. Okay. Is the same true with regard to, I'm going to try and do these in a lump. Is the same true with regard to categories numbered 12 through 16? Is that, and the same being that you searched the documents, but you didn't speak to anybody? Yes. Okay. And just sort of to summarize so that I'm clear on it, the only thing that you did with respect to preparing yourself to testify as the person most qualified and person most knowledgeable on behalf of the juvenile court county of Orange was do document uh, search that you described for us earlier. And then in relation to certain items, you spoke with Barbara Jew and Miss Escobedo. Right? Yes. And then with respect to the balance that we've already spoken of, the only thing you did was search the file cabinets, search the, what do you call it, SharePoint, and a binder. I think you mentioned a binder. Yes. Okay. And there's nothing else you did other than that, right? Correct. Okay. All right. I believe. Oh, let me see what these are. Yeah, these aren't you guys. I believe that's it. Um, what I will say is I'm not done, so we're not uh, terminating or finishing the deposition. We're going to reserve our right to get reconvene the deposition after we meet and confer with your counsel regarding the adequacy of your preparation to testify on behalf of the juvenile court as to the matters designated in um, the attachment to Exhibit A. And if we're able to resolve that, great. If we're not, then there will be some motion process and some other stuff, and you may or may not have to come back. Okay. But other than that, that reservation, I believe we're done for the day. Thank you for coming. Do I out. keep these or these are yours? Uh, no, those go for oh. uh, with the reporter. I make sure. Yeah. You're off the record. The time is one thirty. Yeah. <clears throat>